If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Okay, so we just talked about push down automata, so let's do a quick example. So we talked about the language uh, 0 to the n, 1 to the n. We actually did a grammar in the last video about this exact uh, uh, language. But I want to make a push down automaton for it. So the key here and the way to make PDAs in general is to think, what do I have to push and how do I match them later? So the key strategy here is to, because the number of zeros and ones has to match exactly, we push on the zeros and we will match uh, uh, the zeros with the ones. So every zero that I see, I'm gonna put something on the stack and whenever I see a one after the fact, then I'm gonna pop the same thing from the stack. And if they match, then uh, we will accept only if they match exactly, okay? And note we have to use the stack in some way here because if we didn't use the stack at all, then because this language is not regular, it reduces this problem to being an NFA and there isn't an NFA for this. So we do have to use a stack for this. All right, so what do we do here? Uh, so obviously we need a start state, so let's call this Q0. So whenever you have a matching problem and you need two things to match exactly, note that the stack starts empty. So if I'm popping off ones like I'm going to do here, and I match them perfectly, and let's say another one appears, then I say, I'm going to try to pop here. But that's going to cause a problem. Because if the stack is empty, then that means that we can't actually take that transition, even though uh, there's a one to read. And remember that we have to, if we want to accept, we have to read the whole input, not just some of it, and, and be in a final state, of course. So what the common technique here is not required to do this, but is a good technique, is to put onto the stack some dummy character. So the way we usually write this is, uh, we're going to have a transition that looks like this, and I'll explain what it is. And I'm gonna to go to a state called Q1. So what is, what is this? This is saying we're not reading anything, we're not popping anything because the stack is empty. We can't pop an empty stack, otherwise the machine will stop. And we're going to push on some random character. So this is um, called the bottom of stack character, although it doesn't matter which character this is because I can theoretically put anything on the stack that I want to. Um, so, and note that I'm not reading here. Why am I not reading? Because whenever I see a zero, I want to push onto the stack, and whenever I read a one, I want to pop off the stack. So this job of what I'm pushing on here is neither one of these two, so therefore we want to not read on this transition. Okay, so then now what we need to do is, and so, the, so here's the reason for doing this. So if they match perfectly and we have another one to read, for example, then if we match them up perfectly, the only thing left on the stack is this dollar sign bottom of stack character. And so we're going to enforce that we can only, if we see the dollar sign here at the stack, we can take it and go to a final state which doesn't have any transitions at all. And so the only way we could have gotten to that state is if they matched perfectly and we have nothing else to read because we have to read the whole input, remember? Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to read all of the zeros. And remember, once we see a zero, we need to put it onto the stack. So the common way of doing this is to make a little self loop here. We're reading a zero. We're not gonna pop anything because, um, why not? Um, because the, the job of this transition is not to pop anything. It's only to push zeros on. And so I'm gonna push a zero on. This zero right here doesn't have to be zero. It could be X or whatever, um, because the stack has nothing to do with the input, but it's, it's just nice to have them in co uh, being coinciding, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, 
So then now we need to say, okay, we're done reading the zeros. Let's do the ones. And I'm going to do something that seems a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to have a transition, which I lovingly call the triple epsilon transition. And here's the reason why. If I have a transition out of here on reading a one and doing whatever I need to do with that, then that's not going to allow me to accept the empty string because the empty string is in this language. I need a way of progressing through the machine somehow on with the empty string as input. So I need to have this transition in here. It's non-deterministic, but context-free grammars are non-deterministic too. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so now this comes down to another state I'm going to call Q2. So then now this is the non-deterministic choice to come down and say, I'm going to start working on the ones now. So what can I do? Well, for the one part, I need to read a one, but pop off a corresponding zero that was pushed onto the stack. So how do I make this transition? Well, it's going to be a self-loop just like the one above. We're reading a 1. We are going to pop a 0. And I better not push anything because if I push something, then, I, then I'm just undoing the work that I just did. Sometimes that is a useful thing where I pop and then push the same thing back on, but it's not going to help us here. So I'm going to have this be... Uh, epsilon, not pushing anything at all. And then as the final step, what I'm going to do is have a transition that doesn't read anything, has it pops the dollar sign off, the same character as the one over here at the starting transition, and we could uh, do anything with the push. Remember, it doesn't have to end empty, the stack. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to leave a mess, <laughs> so to speak. And then I'm going to have a state Q3 here, which is an accept state. So why? So I claim that this machine actually works. Why is that the case? Well, does it accept the empty string? And I claim yes, because we can just take this transition. Dollar signs on the stack now after doing this. The, the stack is unchanged after this transition. And then this transition over here, which pops off the dollar sign, and it's on the stack, so we're allowed to take it. And so we accept here. If we have any string of the form 0 to the n1s again, we come over here with dollar sign on the stack, we push on the zeros, we, um, we take this transition eventually, non-deterministically, then we pop off all the ones, and they're going to match exactly, assuming. So then the stack is only going to have the dollar sign on it, and so we can take this transition over again. And so we accept 0 to the n1 to the n. But the important thing here is, do we not accept every other string? That's the thing that a lot of students miss. Do we not accept all the other strings? Because I can just make a PDA for all strings and accept everything. So let's suppose that it's not of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n. Either the counts are mismatched or there's a 1, 0 in the string. So let's see. So if the counts are mismatched, then Let's say that it has more zeros than ones. Then we're going to push on those zeros, pop off with the corresponding ones. Then there's going to be a zero at the top of the stack. I can't take this transition, and I can't take this one because there's no input left. So that string will be stuck here and not accept. If we have more ones than zeros, then I'm going to push all the zeros on, pop uh, them with the ones, the dollar signs on top of the stack, I can't take this transition because there's no, the zero's not on top anymore. I can take this one over here, and we end up over here, but that means that uh, we have some of the input left to read, and we're in accept state, so we can't accept it. Remember, we have to read the whole input in order to accept. So that fails. What if we have a string with a one zero in it? But if we have a string with a one zero in it, that means the one has to be read in this transition because it's the only one that reads a one at all. And the only states that are reachable from this state are Q2 and Q3, and none of them have a zero transition that reads, a reads a zero. So this, in fact, uh, does 
uh, accept exactly the strings 0 to the n, 1 to the n, matching zeros with matching ones. So my recommendation here is to look at and see if you can decompose a string into two pieces which have the same counts or similar counts on each, and then push one of the characters on and then match them with the other character. There are some differences depending on the language, but that's the general principle with PDAs. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about this uh, PDA and anything like it in the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel more. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.